All right, so I'm going to show you how to set up a guild on Raid Builder. So after you make your first account, you can uh, log in and you'll come to this screen. There won't be any guilds on it though, but you can come on down to the Guild Builder and set up your guild with a name and description. Hit Submit, and now the guild should show up here. So now to invite other people to the guild, you're going to come over here to the no access tab and people are going to come to find guild to look for the guild they can search or scroll but then they're going to apply and they're going to want to apply with their in-game name for uh, DKP tick per, uh, reasons this name should match their character name if you're going to use uh, EQ's raid dumps to take DKP ticks so now he needs to get promoted because right now he has no no access. So it's a tap to promote and a long press to demote. I'm going to leave him as a member. And now the next step is to set up the raid bot. So you're going to come over to um, manage classes. Here I have some presets so you can load up preset classes. And I've got a bunch of priorities set up to tell it to how, to how to build the groups. You can see I've got some super classes, the healers in a super class, the bard in a super class. And that just tells it to spread evenly and try not to put uh, too many of those in the same group. And then, so yeah, you can manage priorities here. You can delete with a long press. And you can add priorities here. So like if I want to go Shadow Knight, we'll do... Shadow Knight Bard, make that a high priority. So now, yeah, there's new priority, and that just this all just tells you um, tells the bot how to build your groups for you. There's a doc here that goes into it in more detail. But so yeah, now that you have the raid bot set up, you can create your first raid. Pick a time, and what you want to do is use a uh, click and hold to scroll it. The it doesn't work great with the mouse wheel. Um, I may change that later, but it would be uh, it would just require two action two windows to pop up instead of one. Um, but so yeah, I, I like this one better. Just have to get used to click and hold. But anyways, so yeah, so that's basically all the raid info you need to fill out this fill event with 200 raiders that just is gonna fill it with a like one of each class repeatedly until it hits 200 and that's just so you can test out your uh, your presets and see that the bots building groups how you want it to so you're going to create the raid and then people can come uh, to the check-in page and they can attend i'll add a box and say okay you're both flagged i can change my name right here um, because I'm an admin, it'll just work right away. But if this guy tries to do it, he's going to get a little thing saying, go check your, check with your admins and to get this name change approved. I've got a little bit of overflow on the side, but not too worried about that. So yeah, you come to manage members and you saw there's a red box around this. So that means someone has a name change pending. If manage members is red, that means someone joined the guild and they need access. And so, yeah, I can resolve that. And now, so this account I think is checked in. Oh, I never did check him in. So he's checked in. I'm going to build the raid. So now you can come see. So now it's locked. So only admins can see this. So it's, this is kind of your chance to move people around before people form their groups up. And then you unlock it and everyone else can see it. This guy comes says, oh shit, I'm not checked in. He hits attend. And he shows up in the late check-ins. So the late check-ins will not get picked up by DKP ticks. But if he's on the bench or in a raid, he will. So I'll just auto place him. And then to take a DKP tick, this is one of the places you can do it. You can put in a description, override the default value, and hit add tick. And so these guys all just got a DKP tick. If you're doing EQ DKP ticks, 
what you can do is do a manual tick and uh, so you would paste the raid dump here but I'll just type my name in for now and then so yeah one person should have 100% RA the other should have 50% there's the 50% And there's the 100%. So, yeah, that's one way to take DKP ticks. The other way is to come here to the like main DKP page. Actually, I'll do it on this account. And then you can click on the raid and come over here to DKP ticks. And you can create a new tick here. And it's the same dialog as before. And then here, so here are all the all the ticks for the raid. You can cl then click on the tick, and you can add members to the tick. And again, you can just copy paste an EQ DKP tick into there, and that should be it for taking DKP ticks. You can also create raids from here. And the other way to modify people's DKP is like here's a list of all your members sorted by class. And you can come here and do manual adjustments and just give them DKP manually. And you should see it show up right away up here. And then obviously DK is pretty self-explanatory. That happens Monday mornings. Um, yeah, you've got your RA here. Your purchased items will show up here once you buy some. Um, also, all these Raid Builder logos can be turned into a guild logo. And you can do one logo for light mode and one logo for dark mode. And, um, yeah, so there's dude, dude and his catchphrase. Got a GIF put in for uh, the guild logo. And I, I restrict the height but not the width, so this could take up the entire width of the page if you want a big banner. So yeah, that's pretty much a, a lot about the DKP system. So now to get into some of the auction stuff, here's the auctions. Um, first thing I'll do is set up some wish list items. So I'm gonna add a cloth cap here. And I'll give this guy a cloth cap too. And I'm actually gonna set up an auto bidder for this one. So they should both have plenty of DKP already. I'm gonna have him auto bid up to 50. You can see here the high average and low for the cloth cap is uh, zero because there haven't been any sold, but you'll see the past item sales here in this list um, once items are sold. And everywhere you see an item in the app, you can click on the icon to see the stats and you can click on the name if you want to go to Magalo, so like this. And it'll show you like all the cloth cap info, where it drops, what the drop rates are. And yeah, so I'm going to set up his auto bidder. And then I'm going to create some auctions and talk about this a little bit. So I've got my giant list. This is a three split of Anguish, I believe. Either Anguish or MPG, one of the two. And I've got some of my own custom items in there just for demonstration purposes. But yeah, it's a lot of items, probably over close to 100 unique items. And um, you'll see some, so it's doing work right now. And next it's going to ask me to manage conflicts for multiple items. So like here, there's three celestial fists in the game. And here there's three cloth, cloth caps. So I have to tell it which one I want. And because of that now, this guy has, since he's got an auto bidder set up, it automatically comes here. But on this account, because he did not have the auto bidder set up, the cloth cap is just going to be in blue. And he can add it to his My Auctions by hitting Main or Box. That just sets his limit. And then over here, you can, he can bid. So, um, yeah, so you can filter winning bids and all bids. So with all bids, you can see that auto bidder popping off. I've got a 10-second refresh timer set up in the DKP settings. And yeah, so I can bid against that auto bidder and eventually that auto bidder falls off because it was at 50. So yeah, that's kind of just a rundown of the auto bidder 
and the DKP settings, which I forgot to talk about, are here by where the RAIDs are. And here's all the DKP settings. Um, it's got tooltips explaining it all, so I'm not going to talk about it. You can read about it. Most of it's pretty self-explanatory. And, uh, yeah, so auctions, all these auctions are done. Looks like I'm going to win a cloth cap. So I'll hit, oh, the other thing, I'll show off these filters a little bit. So here, if I want to filter it by class, so it, what happens is I parse all of these uh, strings and check for the classes. So um, only the classes that are actually in the auction will show up in this list, but since it's such a big list, they, they're probably all here. So yeah, here's all the barred items, and I can limit it by race if I want. But yeah, so because most of the items are race all, um, everything's showing up. And I think the only reason I'm getting races to show up at all is because of the uh, Celestial Fists. So I should be able to filter that out. So I can, yeah, there. So now because it's Monk, there's the Celestial Fists. But yeah, so yeah, the filtering's pretty cool. And then, um, so at this point, you can delete auctions by a long press here and you can delete that auction if you don't want to sell it um, and then you can delete all of them if the entire round is messed up or you can hit sell completed which is what I'll do um, so yeah so it's gonna just sell all the items you can see the items you won here so this this count won the cloth cap this count didn't win anything and then the other place you can go to see the items is down here at the main DKP page and click on the raid. And here you can see, you'll see all of the sold items here. And then you can click on that to see winning and highest losing bids if there's any kind of a problem. And then, yeah, here's all the unsold items. And what we like to do on our plat raids is click on this auction round button right here. And you can see that it gets a nice uh, format for unsold items. So that's good for copy pasting back into the creating auctions because uh, to create auctions, you need each item on its own line. So yeah, that's already set up for you. And then up here for the GDKP raids where we're using spreadsheets to track it, this is just a nice format to have like the item, who bought it and how much they bought it for. And then up here, sold items, that's the total. So that would be a plat total. And then, yeah, this is just nice for copying and pasting all of it into spreadsheets. But yeah, I think that's the entire DKP system. You can see the raids adjustments right here. Um, you do want to create a new raid every time, every night or every so often, because you can only store I would say anything from 700 to 1200 items in each raid. So this, I mean, it's a shit ton of items, but if you never create a new raid, this, this page will get slow. So yeah, just create, create new raids on new raid nights and, uh, yeah, happy bidding. It, uh, should be a lot of fun for people and let me know what you think about it. Thanks.